Hi Bits Brood, it's Craig from bitsbox.co.uk here. So in this video I'm going to be painting a bust using just five colours. So um, essentially I'm using black, white and three primary colours, red, blue and yellow. And in this video I'm going to be focusing on the skin areas and I'll show you how you can achieve um, Caucasian skin tones using just five colours. So yeah, I'm going to get straight into it. Okay, so here is the bust that I will be working on. So this is a scale 75 bust from one of the Kickstarters. Thought it'd be quite a good miniature to try this challenge on. So here are my five colours. So just five primary colours and black and white and you can pretty much achieve anything with these. Obviously um, when it comes to metal areas they'll have to be non-metallic metals. But um, there's not a great deal on this miniature in particular. So she has been undercoated with a wraith bone primer. There are a lot of areas on this miniature I do want to um, have. Um, I want fairly sort of dark areas. I'm going to just follow the box up. So if I bring that over. That's the box art. So I'm going to follow that scheme um, as close as I can. So what I'm going to do to begin with, I'm going to take my band black and paint the hat, the hair, um, these bits here, and her top, and that'll give me a good basis. So I'll paint these metal areas black as well. So that's where I'm going to start. In the bottom right hand corner you'll see I have my wet palette. Um, just to show you the mixes that I do and um, just so you guys see that I am only just using these five colours, so I probably mean, um, need a lot more on the palette than that, but just like applying it to the hat, like so. Okay, so got these areas sort of blacked out. Of. You see, in some places, it's not the most solid of coat, but it doesn't matter because we're just using it as a basis. And I've got a little bit on a skin area, but it doesn't matter too much. And um, speaking of skin area, that's what I'm going to do now. You can see I've got my primary colours, and you might just be able to see that I've got some white on the palette also. So we're going to begin taking an old brush and just mixing some colour scales on it, some yellow. And I'm going to get a bit of white in there as well, so we get a sort of paler yellow colour. Now, um, I've watched several videos on mixing skin tones, try to paint myself. There's a lot of trial and error in this, so don't expect just to grab the colours, mix them in, and away you go. That's not going to be the case. But um, if you're doing Caucasian skin, I would suggest sort of mixing up an orange like this, and then you can lighten it up, maybe desaturate it a bit. So you get your more sort of peachy tones. Um, looking at the box art, get up, just get it back on. You can see her skin's quite red on here. Not 100% sure where I'm going to go with that or not. You can also take a tiny amount of blue, like take a small amount of blue. You can see how really overpowering that is. So you sort of mix it into the whole thing. Just give it a bit. I can give it a bit more warmth. Um, but I think I'll take more red and get this sort of ready peachy colour and maybe start from the shadows and work my way up, potentially. So I think that's quite a nice shadow colour. I apologise, I don't know how easy it is for you guys to see on there, but I'll start getting on the miniature. Um, oh, don't do that. It's very, very thinned down. Um, I did wash this and put a primer over it, so I would have expected it to lay a bit better. Um, black hat I had no issues with. However, saying that, it is very thin, so I'll need a few coats of this. Um, I may have to just give that a tiny little clean up on her chest, though. I didn't expect it to be like that. So I'll fix on the, fix on the face. Um, so you can see quite red and orangey. That will make great 
a great shadow colour. And I might even add further shadows, just a bit more warmth, maybe mix up the brown tone. Um, so if you want brown as well, you can you can do that just by mixing all three primary colours. So let's make one over here. Let's get some of that and some of the yellow. Um, and then obviously that's very grey at the moment, but you can work in uh, more of the colours too. A nice sort of browny colour. I think um, just one thing to be mindful of if you're doing this three and um, five colour challenge, the blue is very overpowering. So if you do equal amounts of everything, you're gonna probably have more blue than anything else. But we can sort of make a nice sort of browny here, and then some more yellow. Kind of a bit green, so add in some red to kind of that. And yeah, you can use that as a shadow color. Because I'm using my wet palette, I can keep these colors on here for quite a while. I can come back to them. Um, really not liking what's ha happened on the chest though. So it might be a case of just giving that a bit of a wash again. Maybe reapplying some primer, some brush on primer to that area. Um, let's get some more on the face. But yeah, I'll get that sorted out. And then we'll look at adding, adding some shadow and highlights to the skin just using the colours on the palette. Okay, so this is how she's looking. So it's quite a nice dark skin tone to work from. I do want to add just a little bit more in the shadows though. So I've got this mix here where I was just demonstrating the browns. I've added a little bit of red into the end of it. And it's quite a thin glaze. And I'm just going to sort of go glaze it into the deepest recesses and I might try and feather that area a little bit as well. So I'll work around all the deepest Areas. I'll do a glaze of this and then I'll probably come back in and do another one, just a bit more focus to build up and then I'll sort of work on doing uh, the lighter areas. But you can see already we're getting that sort of pinky ready here in the shadows which is what we want. Okay, so, see we've got the shadows in here now. Um, if you was to come for a minute, if you had quite a nasty sunburn, then you could probably just leave it here. Um, but of course, I've got to add a lot of highlights and stuff here. So, uh, I've got this original mix here. I'm going to add a bit, a bit of red into this yellow. Get it close to the um, original base coat. And then of course we need to lighten that up, make it look a bit more peachy coloured as well. I'm probably going to need some more white on the I'll take all this. Start getting this nice peachy skin tone. Just get a bit more white. Give the white a shake. So, um, this pattern filming. Um, a day later, which is why wet palette's great because all paint is still wet and usable. I still use my original mixes. So get some nice white in there, and you can see, hopefully, you can see 
that's starting to get more like a skin colour now. I'll show you on there. My own skin looks very red. I'm on this camera, but I'll put it on into close. It's a little more red skin to it now, anyway. Uh, add some water to that mix. Because I want to just apply it thinly. such so obviously I don't want the shadows to be um, all over her chest so start glazing up from there I need a bit more water though so too much on the brush I've just got a bit on my hand So that's not come on too great. Um, there may just be odd little bits of a dry paint in there, which is a bit of a pain. Um, that's better. That's much better. That's what we want. Very thin glaze. Just spread it out evenly. I'm sorry, this side now. Yes, yeah, it's a little bit of dried up paint, which is not what we wanted. And then, um, but that's fine, you can deal with that. Just go all over this area. So it's not going to look like much at the moment. But you can see where it's starting to get lighter. So it'll be a case of adding several glazed layers working up away from the shadows. I may even glaze in a bit more of a transition as well. Um, see how this looks when it dries. If it's too if it was too big a jump between the two values, then I can just go back in with the original base colour and sort of bridge the gap. So yeah, I'm going to work, work around and then I'll do a few coats and show you what we're left with and try and fix what's going on there. So, okay, so you can see it's starting to get a lighter skin tone on there. Um, the transition there at that angle does look a bit stuck as I turn it around. Um, oh. You can see it's, um, hopefully you can see it's, it's a bit better, it looks better. Um, bye bye. That's the thing with miniature painting, isn't it? Um, as soon as you put them under a camera, you can notice things a bit more. Um, you see sort of around here as well. And um, it looks a lot smoother by eye. Anyway, so I'm going to go in the face as well. We're gradually, gradually building up this colour now. She's going to get gradually lighter. What I want to do though, I'm going to take some blue. Now, some of my mixes are now starting to dry up. Let's take some yellow. I'm going to make a green. I'll make a green. Maybe a bit darker green, actually. I could even add a touch of black. A lot of that black's starting to dry up now, because I've used a lot of it. Wash brush out. And I'm going to take a tiny bit of that green. Add it into some of this mix to get this sort of colour. Fill it out and uh, a bit too much. Let's see what that's like. Um, let's just go around the eyes. No, I really don't want much on the brush at all. I think, I think maybe um, more. More blue into that, into that green mix. Yeah, that's a bit better. So I like to um, have a sort of a bluey shadow, sort of bluey green shadow. 
when it comes to um, doing around the eyes and then have more of a red redness around the lips and the cheeks and stuff. Um, but it's very subtle, very subtle. Um, I may actually do um, some makeup on her. There's some on the box out. So, you know, it can be sort of less subtle when it comes to doing that. But just for this step, just very, very subtle. Like so. And of course, you can use reference photos and stuff like that. You can easily see um, different sort of shades in different areas, so it's entirely up to you where you go with it. So I'll give that a little time to dry, and then I'll probably just add a little bit more just in the dark recesses, and then we'll go back to the doing some more of these highlights. Okay, so. I've mixed a bit more of uh, original skin tone on the palette and I'm adding in some more white to put some more on the palette. I need some water as well. This will be our next, our next highlight up. You see it sort of maintains that sort of pinky, peachy hue to it. I have all shape for these, just tiny little bits in there, which I assume will just dry paint or they're coming from elsewhere, which I do obviously need to avoid. And again, it's just a case of just layering this up. See, it gets much lighter as it goes on. Um, ideally, if you can, start your brush where you want the transition to be and then just pull the paint towards where you want the lighter areas to be. Do you think I need to go a little bit thinner? It will dry, but not as bright. I like to, with skin I really like to just have nice thin paint and just gradually work it up. But it all, all depends what you're going for. Of course if you want hard shadows and that and it all depends on the miniature's environment then you don't have to be as subtle with your trend or as smooth for your transitions. And see now, obviously, oh, that will look a bit better as it dries. So we're getting a lot closer now to her actual Caucasian skin tone. And of each time I do this, obviously, I'm painting less and less of her features, just focusing more on the raised ones. And again, with this, once I've done a single pass of it, I will do another pass, being even more focused. Again, that helps build up that little transition. So, I'm really starting to get a lighter, lighter flesh tone now. And if you're doing thin paints and glazes like this, they'll dry quite quickly as well, so... Oops, I'll speed up your painting, but do make sure the previous layer is completely dry before you add another one, otherwise you'll start moving the paint about to places you don't want it to be, and that'll leave streakiness and such. Um, but you can see the difference between when it first goes on and when it's dry. So, as long as your paint's thin, if, you know, even if it looks really bright when it first goes on, you know, if you look at the face now, compared to just a couple of minutes ago, and that's exactly what you want. So just keep it thin, 
And yeah, just keep gradually building that up and then I'll add some more white for our next step. Okay, so you'll notice I've switched out my palette paper and there's just too many little bits of dried up paint in there, making it a bit difficult to get as much of the um, palette as I wanted. Now I thought it was a good time now because we get to a stage now where the next layer is going to be quite a sort of mid-tone, sort of typical Caucasian skin if that makes sense, so it's not too pale, not too tanned. So I thought it could be a good opportunity now to show you guys just mixing that tone from scratch. And I do recommend um, still having some of the previous mixes if need be, I will um, maybe mix some of them up if I need to. So let's get some, some red and yellow. So, obviously this is all eyeballed, but we'll start with an equal mix to get our orange. And then we'll get some white and start adding in our white. So, a lot of white now in relation to these two colours. You can see I'm not mixing in the entire amount. I'll keep some of that orange there if need be. So there we go, that sort of gives us a nice lighter skin tone there. And I've got a slightly darker one if the um if the transitions need glazing in. So stick this final video to really show you a good way of doing that. But um, yeah, it all depends because some people like to start in their mid tone, work down the shadows, work up the highlights. Whereas I've sort of almost just started at shadow and gone and just going up and up and up. So I'm moving my hands around really can't really see a lot of what's going on. But so I mean, it's whatever you feel comfortable with, of course. So you can see as this goes on now, it's really, it's really light. Of course, being on the wet palette is quite thin, but I'm going to thin it down further. Because the last thing I want would, is it to sort of dry, looking like, looking like that. Of course, if it does, just glaze over the mid-tones. I bring it, bring it down. So definitely want to be sort of lighter across the uh, forehead and the trick is to keep them thin and sp spread them out evenly So you can see there, like it's not spread around too evenly there. So before it dries, just quickly start spreading that about. And um, so, looking at it on the camera, you can really see the difference between where the shades are and the. And the highlights, um, I keep saying about smooth transitions, it doesn't really show up too well on the camera. So that could be down to me, I need to probably make them even smoother for the camera. Um, of course we'll see more once, um, obviously this dries. So. But sometimes it's handy if you aren't filming and stuff maybe you know, consider just taking photos of your miniatures at each step, see what the camera picks up, because I'm, I'm sure a lot of you um, could probably relate to this, you've painted a nice miniature and you take a photo and you notice there's something that you forgot to paint or it didn't look as smooth, that happens to all of us. Um, you know, I'm not coming on these videos claiming to be an expert on a really top quality miniature painter, but I do like to show even with 
my limited skills, you can do this sort of challenge and paint some really nice looking skin just with um, a few colours. I mean, we're literally, literally only using three colours at the moment. So, as it does look quite stark around the eyes and the um, and the mouth, now that these bright highlights are going on, what I'm going to do is come in. This is why I've kept these sort of darker tones on the palette. Just come in with some of them, thin it out, and just glaze it in. So you're sort of bridging the gap. Now I might want to have a little bit more red to that, just a tiny bit more, get it more sort of pinky again. So you sort of go a little bit over your shade and a little bit over your highlight between them and um, hopefully even just after this one quick pass, that will demonstrate quite nicely what's sort of going on there. Look, the highlights look really bright. I think the lights just reflecting off them so much that they look really bright. But I am, um, I promise you, they are, they are. So yeah, I'll keep bridging this gap. It's really frustrating just looking at the um, camera in front of me and seeing like her, like her cheek here looks really light. It looks almost like sort of these shabby bones sort or of stuff. But when I look at it, normally it looks, it looks fine. I'm gonna put a glaze over it. Cause I can just imagine people watching this thinking, oh my god, it looks terrible. And but I'm sitting here and it, it looks okay. So. Yeah, just keep applying them. These little glazes over. Helps me about out. Now if you paint on a 28mm miniature this way, rather than like a, a larger scale bust like this, you won't have to do as much glazing. So That's getting there. You can see little, there's a little gap there by her chin. Just needs to sort of be filled up, but she's really starting to come together now. Um, obviously, once I put the eyes in, that'll make them areas look a little nicer. But yeah, you can definitely see now. I'm just getting a little bit more lighter on the chin. So I've also been whacking the face. You want her chest to be a lot lighter as well, and the base of her neck. So, so yeah, I'll, I want I almost well went against my own advice there. Let's drag up towards. So, yeah, as we flip her over, you can start to see where the highlight's going. And can build up more towards her necklace. Okay, so I've been playing around with some more highlighting and glazing. I've even um, taken a photo just so you sort of see it a little bit better. Although you can see now the face isn't looking 
too bad with a few glazes. I'm going to add some more glazes too in a minute. My chest, I think I can smooth out a little bit as well. So, again, just to demonstrate for you guys, sort of um, going somewhere between the mixing in a little bit of the lighter and the medium tones I've got on the palette. Have a little bit on your brush. And again, it's a case of glazing between the areas where you want the transition to be smoother. And then I'll draw the paint upwards. And I can work on that over several little glazes. More over this side. Um, it's, it's amazing how different that looks on the camera to the eye. More so than the, um, what I usually see, anyway. So, I'll let that dry, I'll be building that up. One, what I want to do is grab some of the red make a glaze with that, just for red on its own, and add loads of water, so I'm adding loads here, so see the consistency there, I always like to use my thumb, you can see there, it's pretty much just red water, have a little bit on your brush, and just add some colour to her cheeks, spread it around evenly, at first it might not look like anything, but you can do several layers of this. And I'll add a little bit of to, colour to her cheeks. And also I've got to say, um, you've probably seen, I painted in her the whites of her eyes. Just, and I think just doing that has made these the overall appearance of her face look a lot smoother as well. So yeah, I'm gonna um, continue on with some glazes on here. What I will do as well, um, before I do that though, let's get a little bit more white and add that to our skin tone. Now I'm gonna also take a tiny bit of this red and add that in because I feel like the more white I'm adding, I'm losing some of that pinkiness. I do want to man maintain some of it. So this is very bright, but it's very thin, just where I've added that red. And I'm just going to add a very small amount of it to like, her nose and above of her eyes. Hope you can just see that going on, and that will dry quite subtle. Um, just above her lip as well, and the top of her chin. Like so, maybe a little bit of a base of her neck. Just like that. I'm not entirely happy with how her neck's looking, but it's, it's okay. And also, maybe just a little bit up in there and on the other cheek as well. Now that our previous glaze is dry. So, it's looking okay. I think I really want to put it around this area. I'm just going a little bit. So, a lot of back and forth, really getting this skin tone perfect, but I'm really liking it now. You 
can see there, just need to fix up this area. And in some glazes to smoothen that out. So that's what I'll do now, and a um, couple of little bits, and we're pretty much done with the skin. Obviously, I've got to do the arms as well. I haven't been focusing too much on the arms um, lately either. Okay, so I've been playing around the glazes, and you can see she's starting to look a bit better now. I'm quite happy with where she is, and I've been taking some photos throughout to give you guys a bit of a better look. So let's work on some details on her face. I'll start with her lips. Nice and straightforward really, because we can just crack open that red. Chuck some of that on the palette. Don't have to be as thin as the glaze, but definitely still keep it nice and thin. So add in some water. Now I want her lipstick to have a slight purple tint to it, so get a little bit of blue. Now obviously blue is so overpowering. Um, let's just take a little bit on the brush there. So you can see it's how overpowering that is. I want a bit more though. That's quite nice. So I've got a very small detail brush here now, and very carefully just apply it over the lips. So it's quite thin still. Now because it's lipstick though, you can get away with it being a bit thicker. I just want to just build it up gradually though. And then what I'll do as well, just take a little bit more of the red, I'll wax some on the palette. And then mix in a little bit more over here to make a little highlight colour. Um, if you want to go really bright, um, when it comes to highlighting red, um, always mix in yellow rather than white, because obviously if you mix in white, you're going to get and um, pink. Um, but in this in this case, because I've already got quite a lot of blue in there, I can get away with just adding the red. So I'll build this up with some couple more layers. And then we'll work on the eyes. Okay. So that's a um, nice colour on the lips. I really like that actually. I'm going to add some like eyeshadow. So on the box I actually got like a yellow and sort of purple eyeshadow going on. Um, let's get some yellow on the palette. So the yellow, the yellow is slightly greeny. So I'll oh, actually dip into that blue or something over there. Take some of that, we don't really need to worry about that much now. Slightly greeny, no, you definitely want this thinned out quite nicely. Take a tiny little detail brush again. Just get some on there, not too much. And, I mean, literally, just apply it where you really want, really. Yeah. Just very closely around the eyes. Again, it's a case of just building this up with thin glazed layers. A bit of the eye as well. Like so, it gives a nice little subtle effect. I'll probably come in and just do one little layer, one test dry. Um, but I really like that. I may go for some purple as well, just so we're mixing a little bit. A bit 
more colour, so I'll come back and do that in a moment. Okay, so now to paint the pupils, you can take some of the black and I'm using this Psycho brush, um, Psycho it's called, from Anime No I've never really used it before, but judging by the tiny, tiny um, little bristles on it, it's probably designed for this very job. So just very carefully, a bit hard on camera, sorry, keep my head in the way. A tiny little dot in like so. So that's essentially it for the skin hairs. Just one more thing I'm I'm going to do now. I haven't finished doing the arms yet. I will come back and I've just been focusing on, on the the face and torso just to get this video filmed today. But what I want to do is just paint her fingernails and show you how to do that. So obviously, if you look at normal sort of natural fingernails, I'm going to go for natural because obviously you can paint them any colour and you don't need a video showing that, but if you look at the fingernails normally they're very sort of pink so we want that sort of um, a pinky colour sort of slightly mixed with your skin tone so we'll go into this skin tone put in the paints that we use to make pink of course and then really thin it out, we'll take some of this and just mix it with that and um, there's not much of this really left on the palette, it's quite it's drying up quite a lot now so we'll take some of this orange from over here, put that in and we'll add a bit more white and give us this very nice pinky colour so a little bit brighter than my actual thumbnail, so we can just sort of mix in a bit more of this, maybe a tiny bit more red. You can get it fairly close. Um, a bit more red, I think. If you're painting something larger, you could put more detail in, having it slightly darker towards the tip. Um, but obviously this is quite small. I mean, it's just a really, really thin that out. We only really need the one colour. And get some on a brush. And just paint her nails. And again, it's a case of um, building that up a little bit, although it's gone on pretty well. Like so. So, um, yeah, I'll quickly get them finished actually. Just on this hand. And then, yeah, I'll take a bit of a darker mix with the red. I think it's miniatures a large enough scale for me to, I don't know if it wants to focus that close. Um, let's take a little bit of the darker stuff and paint a bit more towards the tip. Like so. But yeah, um, that is the skin area of this bust. Um, in the next video, we'll look at painting the clothes. And I may do a separate one for the metallics, um, depending on how long the other one turns out. I was going to do a whole thing in one video, but this one's probably quite long now. There's been a lot of back and forth, but I really like her at the moment. Um, I really like the way I've got with the skin in the end. And it's not looking too bad on the camera now. So that's good. Um, pictures can always be found on our social medias. Um, all the links are down below, Instagram and Twitter especially if you want to see photos of all the miniatures that we paint. Of course, um, feel free to like this video on YouTube if you enjoyed it. And of course you can subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with everything we've been working on. So yeah, looking forward to Part two. I'll see you all then.
If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.